Hey, hop on. I'm gonna show you something. This is the Mega Broom. It was built to be the most durable, reliable broom on any job site. This bad boy features an all steel construction for extreme durability. Plus, because it's basically just a frame, you can replace the broom head with any standard 24 inch broom. It even has a squeegee up front. Man, that is one cool broom. But is it a mega broom? Well, it has something else too. That's right, this thing also has steel extensions for six feet of mega broom. You can use it as a standard two foot broom or a six foot mega broom, but it's not perfect. Guys are constantly complaining about how heavy it is and the coarse bristles don't get up the dust from the floor. And well, honestly, I wanna go bigger. That's why I'm proposing the mega broom version two. Want to learn how to build it? Stick around, I'll show you. All right, so what does version two need to be able to do in order to be a successful project? Well, first and foremost, it needs to be durable. I mean, it is the mega broom after all. It's gonna get thrown around. It's gonna get beat on. It's gonna get wet. It's probably gonna get ran over. So it needs to be tough. It also needs to be lighter. The old version is just really heavy. I hope to bring that weight down with something like aluminum, uh, though that's definitely gonna sacrifice durability. Hopefully it's a nice compromise. As far as what lighter means, don't worry, I've already gone and weighed the old version uh, so we can use that for comparison later. It needs to be bigger. I mean, six feet's big, don't get me wrong, but I wanna see this thing bigger, man. I think we can almost reach 10 feet. It needs a quick disconnect. Uh, the old version with the bungee cord to lock it in works great. It's simple and it works every time, but it's a pain in the butt when you're bending over and sometimes it gets a little stuck on there and you lose the bungee cord. So a quick disconnect, that's gonna be a requirement. Now, a squeegee, that would be a nice feature. It's super handy on the old one, but I don't use it terribly often. Uh, so it's not necessarily a requirement for the version two, uh, but if we can find a way to squeeze it in, it would definitely be a nice feature. So now that I know what we want the version two to be, now it's time to do some research and pick out parts. All right, so these are the brooms I ended up picking out. They're medium bristle brooms and they've got a nice flat wood top to make it easy to screw the frame down to. I ended up picking three feet. So that means with the extensions, this thing is gonna be nine feet wide. It's gonna be intense. They even have uh, weight listed as well as dimensions. So once I knew the dimensions, I was able to pick out the aluminum. All right, so for the aluminum, I ended up just picking out this angle stock. It's 6061, which is your basic run-of-the-mill standard aluminum. So I'm gonna do an eighth inch wall thickness, which is kind of thin and flimsy, but I think with that solid wood block of the broom head, it'll be plenty strong enough. So for the connector pieces, I'm gonna do basically the same thing as version one, which is two hollow square tubes that slide into each other. It's probably gonna be a really tight fit and need to be sanded down though. I don't know, we'll see. As far as where to get your metal, you know, check your local metal suppliers, but do your research first so you know what fair pricing is before you walk in. A lot of times if you just walk in, they don't give fair pricing. Uh, there's a lot of great stores online too, especially if you're trying to get little small pieces. All right, once I had all the parts picked out, I was able to do some weight calculations to see if we're gonna hit our targets. What I ended up finding was that the main broom is probably going to be a little bit heavier than version 1, which is a little disappointing, but consider it is bigger, so that means it's less dense, right? That counts for something. The extended version, though, is probably going to be lighter, which is nice because it's going to be a lot bigger. Um, so once I did all the math and I was reasonably certain that it was going to work, it was just a matter of placing the parts on order. So now we just wait. Check it out, all the pieces are in. Nice big three foot broom head. Our angle uh, angle stock. 
and check it out. The coolest piece, the connector plugs. Now they don't fit together quite yet. But once I sand them down, I think they'll fit. Normally I cheap out on metal, but because I use this broom a lot, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna spend the money on thicker stuff and I'm glad I did because that just looks awesome. And sitting here holding it, it's a lot lighter than I was expecting. I think this thing's gonna, I think it's gonna work and it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna look like a spaceship with all this aluminum. Look at this. Oh yeah, doesn't that look cool? Well, let's get to work. There's a lot to do. We've encountered our first problem and that is how do we cut a 90 degree notch out of the bottom of this tube to slide in and connect nicely and squarely to the angle bracket you could just eyeball it I've done that before it'll get you pretty close but I've got a better idea and that is this I quickly modeled this together and printed it up in about an hour and you just slide it over. Now you can take your marker. Look at that. Perfect. All right, one thing about aluminum, make sure to wear your safety glasses because if you get something in the eye, there's no getting it out with the magnet. All the pieces are cut. They're all sanded and prepped. Now it's time to join everything. Uh, we're gonna braze this aluminum. Full disclosure, I have never brazed aluminum before. Actually, I've never worked with aluminum before. I always use steel. Anyway, uh, let's get started. We're gonna need a hotter torch. Well, that was a complete failure. As it would turn out, getting it hot enough, long enough to braise it proved to be an impossible task. You can see I'd get it hot enough to even melt this aluminum here. And yet by the time I pulled the torch off and grabbed the brazing rod in the other hand, it was already too cold. Or I couldn't take the brush and scrub it fast enough uh, and it just, it just was not working. It looks terrible. 
I'm sure someone better than me could have managed, uh, but we're gonna have to try, uh, try welding this instead. where it needs to be. So these are lacquered from the factory, but it seems like every time I've ever had a wood broom, they always seem to disintegrate on me. So I'm gonna hit it with some clear coat. Uh, Maybe redundant, but no harm, no foul. So let's do it. Well, here it is extended. It's definitely bigger, nine feet. We can go ahead and cross that off the list right now. 
Now all we gotta do is put her to the test and fix what breaks. First, let's start by weighing it and seeing how we did. 21.6. 9.6. All right, so the numbers are in. Version one weighed 10.4 pounds. We expected the new Robo Broom to weigh 12.2. It actually clocked in at 9.6. That's 0.8, maybe about a pound lighter. Now, the extended version weighed 20.2. We expected the new one to weigh 17.4. It actually clocked in at 21.6. That's about a pound and a half heavier. It's always a little disappointing when theory doesn't meet practice, but oh well. So considering that the broom is so much bigger and that the regular version is actually lighter and that my scale is only accurate down to a quarter pound, I consider this a success. All right, so it's lighter and it's got a quick disconnect, but is it durable? Let's find out. So version one was basically purpose built to push dirt. Let's see how the robo broom does. Now it helps to get a running start. Try that again. Maybe a little bit more. Four times the charm. So one of the easiest ways to break a broom is to kind of hit it in the corner like that. It makes a bending torque on the handle almost, snaps the handles clean off. Let's see how this one does. Let's see. That was too easy. Take two, more dirt this time. All right, so how about extended mode? Unfortunately, I can only put one on here because uh, it's too big for my garage. Anyway, let's see what happens. Anyway, so I could push a little bit of dirt, but can it handle being thrown around? Well, she's definitely got some dents and scratches now and kind of a bent handle, but I would definitely call that durable. Of course, no test will ever be equivalent to some real on the job testing. We'll see how she holds up, but I definitely call that durable. Now all that's left to do is clean up the garage and wrap this one up. Success. I'm really happy with it being noticeably lighter than the first one, yet still managing to be a little bit bigger. That and the raw metal look just looks so cool. It checked off everything on the list with the exception of the squeegee. As I'm recording right now, it's been over six weeks since I made the first cut. At some point, you just need to be done with the project. That's why I had to cut the squeegee. I also had plans for a cool handle down here. It didn't make it either. Easily, the biggest struggle on this project was the brazing and welding. First, I think this absolutely could have been brazed with tighter tolerances and a hotter torch. Maybe something like acetylene or oxyacetylene. But even if it could have been brazed, I don't think brazing would have been the right option. That's why I switched gears and decided to try TIG welding. I've never TIG welded in my life, and boy, jumping straight into aluminum may not have been the right call. I mean, I did my research, I cleaned my parts, the tungsten, the filler, used clean stainless steel brushes, even still, those were some bad welds. 
I mean, the flat ones turned out okay, but I'm used to welding steel, so I'm like, oh, I could just fill in those big gaps. Not the case, as it would turn out for aluminum. Next time, definitely tighter tolerances. I mean, despite the welds looking pretty ugly, they did hold up on the torture tests and a lot of tests off camera too. But yeah, if I was ever going to do this again, I would definitely take more time to practice TIG welding. But hey, if you ever have a project you want to do, but don't think you know how or have the skill, just remember, a grinder and paint will make you the welder you ain't. Jokes aside, it does only need to be good enough. So get out there and make it happen. It's better than not doing it at all. Now, excuse me, I have to go. Somewhere, there is a floor that needs sweeping.